Hello students, today we will discuss about the osteology of clavical bone. Now this is the first bone you read when you are starting the, your upper limb. So today we will discuss about the features of this bone, muscles attachment and different parts of the bone. So what about the clavicle? Now clavicle is known as little key. Now this is the very commonly asked question in your exam. Now we will see why it is known as little key. The most common name is collar bone because you know that this is the collar and you have the bone on both the side so the name comes is collar bone. Now this is again the question of your exam that there is no homologous in the pelvic girdle. Now when you will see the lower limb you have the scapula homologous to the hip bone, you have the uh, uh, suppose you have the humerus, you have the femur in the lower limb. but there is no homologous in the lower limb that represent the clavicle bone. So this is the question of your exam. Now what are the important functions of the clavicle? Now the first function is that it holds the upper limb in such a way that the limb swing free from the side of the trunk. So when you are moving the upper limb, you will realize that the upper limb is not hitting your trunk because it is supported by the clavicle which hang it on the outer side of the trunk. The another important thing is that it transmits the weight of upper limb to the axial skeleton that is your sternum and the another important thing is that medial two third of the posterior surface protect the neurovascular structures. Now when you will see these two functions of the clavicle, you will see the structure of the clavicle is in such a way that it first provide the weight transmission but the whole clavicle does not take part in the weight transmission. This is the first thing which you have to remember only the medial two third of the clavicle transmit the weight. Another important thing is that the medial two third also helpful in protecting the neurovascular structures because it is going to form the upper part of your axilla through which the structure enters from neck into the upper limb. Clear? The clavicle perform the axial rotation around its long axis during overhead abduction. Now this is the reason that the clavicle is considered as a little key. Now what is the meaning of this thing? Now you know that when you have the big lock, when the lock size is very big, you have a long keys and that key has to rotate very much if you want to unlock the uh, lock. But if you have a small lock, you need a small key and you hardly rotate 5 or 10 degree, the lock will unlock. Now the clavicle is a little key, that means the rotation of the clavicle is very small. The rotation of the clavicle is very little and sometimes even you cannot appreciate that rotation and that rotation is equivalent to the movement of a little key which is required to open the small lock and the rotation is hold hardly 5 to 10 degree. Now this rotation occurs along the long axis. Now what does it mean? Now suppose this is your clavicle and this is the long axis. This is the anteroposterior axis and this will be the long axis because the axis which is parallel to the length is the long axis. So this clavicle is rotating along this long axis and this rotation is, is so small that you cannot even appreciate this rotation. And there is a only single condition in which this rotation will take place that is overhead abduction. That means if I am doing the abduction, now this is your 90 degree abduction. But when you will take the overhead abduction at that time, this clavicle has to move otherwise your scapula will not show the forward rotation. So for that you need this clavicle to rotate around its long axis and that rotation is very much small, very small rotation which cannot be appreciated sometimes just like a little key and this little key open the lock even you, you are not able to appreciate the uh, rotation of that small key. So this is why it is known as little key. Now 
what are the peculiarities of the clavicle now this is very commonly asked question in your viva now this is the only long bone which lies horizontally in the body so the first thing which you have to remember that clavicle considered as a modified long bone now why it is modified because all the long bones lies vertically in the body like humerus like femur like tibia you will find the long bones are placed vertically but this is the long bone which is horizontally placed so that's why it is not following the criteria of long bone second thing is it is not having any medullary cavity this is again a characteristic feature of the long bone which is not here so again it is a modified long bone the whole bone is almost visible and easily palpable here you can see that you can palpate your clavicle which lies subcutaneously covered by the platysma now the only long bone which ossifies mostly not completely mo mostly in the membrane now you have to remember that the long bones generally cartilaginous in origin that means they form by the endochondral ossification but when you will see the clavicle the majority part comes from the membranous ossification the only long bone which ossify by the two primary center now this is something is important that primary centers appears before birth and generally you have the center one uh, for each bone but here you have the two primary centers and it is sometimes pierced by the intermediate branch of supraclavicular nerve which is a cutaneous nerve now this is again the question of your exam or sometimes somebody may ask how will you justify membranous ossification of the clavicle at that time you can see uh, here that when the ossification in the membrane starts at that time the membrane pierced by this intermediate branch and later on the ossification took place and that's why it looks like that the uh, bone is pierced by the nerve but actually the membrane was pierced by the nerve and later on that membrane converted into the bone the first bone to start ossifying in the body now this is something confusing now this is not the question that which bone is completely ossified at birth the question is name the bone which starts the ossification earliest so this is the first bone which starts the ossification it not completed yet it just starts the ossification so it is the first bone to start the ossification in the body at around fifth or sixth week of intrauterine life and its ossification continue till your 20 years of age so it is the last bone to complete the ossification at around 20 to 21 years of age so the, these are the two questions name the bone which starts the ossification first answer is clavicle and name the bone which completes the ossification last again the clavicle clear now what are the parts of the clavicle now when you will hold the clavicle in your hand you have to look for the two ends and the shaft the shaft is curved and the ends are lateral and medial why because it is horizontally placed if it is a vertical bone then you will have upper and lower end but when you will have the horizontal bone you have medial end and lateral end clear now this lateral end is facing towards the acromion process of the scapula that's why the lateral end is known as acromial end and the medial end facing the sternum so it is known as sternal end now in this diagram you can see that this is a curved shaft of the clavicle and these are the two end one is lateral end and another is medial end now how to identify these end that we'll see in the coming slide now when you will see the side determination of the clavicle you have to keep these thing in your mind what is the first point that i already told you you have to keep the bone horizontally so you will have the lateral end medial end now what is the difference between the lateral and medial end the lateral end is flat so when you will see this diagram here you can see that this is a flat end and this is not flat it is quadrangular so you have to place this end on outer side or the lateral side this end on the inner side or medially so once you will keep the clavicle 
in the position where you have to first make sure that your broad quadrangular end is on the medial side and flat and broad area is on the lateral side. So flat part is on the lateral part and the quadrangular part is over medial end of the clavicle. Clear? You cannot hold the clavicle in such a way if I will keep the flat end on the medial side then my criteria is not following. So the first criteria is you have to make sure lateral end is flat and medial end is quadrilateral or quadrangular. Now the second criteria for the side determination is about the curvature. Now I told you that curvature is horizontal so you have to keep it horizontally. Now when you will see the curvature you will realize that lateral one third of the curvature in anterior part is concave forward. What does it mean? Now when you will see this image you can see that this is this will become the anterior border and this is the posterior border. This is the posterior border, this is the anterior border. Now the question comes why? Why it is anterior? Why it is posterior? So here you have to keep one thing in mind that the lateral end, this is the lateral end is having concavity anteriorly and convexity posteriorly. Clear? Now apart from that you will realize one more thing that the inferior surface of the clavicle is rough while the superior surface is smooth and when you see the inferior surface you will have the one impression on the medial side, you have the elevation and a ridge on the lateral side and a shallow groove on the inferior surface of the middle part of the clavicle. So whenever you are doing the side determination of the clavicle, the four important points are first you have to identify the ends, lateral end is flat, medial end is quadrilateral. Second thing you have to look for only the anterior border of the lateral one third which has to be concave and the posterior one automatically become convex. The third point is that you have to differentiate superior and inferior surface. The superior surface is smooth, inferior surface is rough and the roughness is because of the presence of the groove projections and tubercles on the inferior surface. And the fourth point is that the curvature is always horizontal. You have to place the clavicle horizontally. Clear? So if suppose I have to identify the side determination of this bone, you have this figure in your exam and you have the question identify the side and you can see that both the surfaces has been given in the exam. So you will realize this is the inferior surface because of the roughness, this is the superior surface. Now the superior, once I am confirming with the two ends and the superior inferior surface, I will keep the lateral side one third concave. So if it is of the right side, you will realize the lateral side is concave, then you will have the superior flat surface and the roughness on the inferior side. So this image become the clavicle of my left side, clear? And what is the anatomy of position? Horizontal placement near the root of neck. Now, here in this video, you can appreciate the whole rotation where you can identify the different parts. Now in this diagram, you can see that this is your lateral end, this is the flat end which is having concavity anteriorly. Now when you will twist, twist now you will realize that there is an elevation. Now this elevation is there, this roughness is here. And this, these two areas are not present on the superior surface. So here you can see the projection is on the inferior side. Here you can see the cur curvature is having the anterior concavity, clear? So you have to rotate the clavicle to see the all the areas and once you will rot rotate it and see all around, you will realize that there are projections present on the inferior surface and that projection is known as conoid tubercle which is a feature of the lateral side of the clavicle. So this is the conoid tubercle which is present on the inferior part of the lateral side of the clavicle, clear? And here you can see this roughness 
on, on the medial side on the inferior surface. So when you will rotate all around, you will realize it is a flat part, it is a quadrangular or quadrilateral part, it is an anterior concavity. So these all features you will realize when you are rotating this. Now this is a clavicle of my right side. Why right side? Because you can see that here, this is the concavity present on the lateral third anteriorly. Clear? Now, the next one is, what are the other features of the end? Now, when you will see the other features of the end, the lateral end is known as acromial end. Why acromial end? Because you can see, this is the acromion process of the scapula and the clavicle is going to make a joint here. This joint is known as acromioclavicular joint and that's why the lateral end is known as acromial end. Now, the end is flattened from above downward, which we have already seen. It bears a facet and this is going to form a acromioclavicular joint, which is a synovial variety. And once you will have the synovial joints, you know that every synovial joint is having the capsule. So, the margins of this area is giving attachment to the capsule of this acromioclavicular joint. Now, what about the medial end? Now, medial end is known as external end and it is quadrangular, it is not flat. It articulates with sternum and first costal cartilage. So, it articulates with the clavicular notch of the manubrium sterni and with the first costal cartilage and this joint is known as sternoclavicular joint. The sternoclavicular joint is a little bit complex joint as compared to the acromio clavicular joint because here in this joint you are having the capsule and inside the capsule there is an articular disc and that disc divides the joint into the two different cavities. So this is the important thing about the joint. So because it is a again the synovial joint so it is having a capsule and I told you that there is a disc is present inside and you are having a supporting ligament that is known as inter clavicular ligament. So here you can see in this diagram, this green color areas are interclavicular ligament which is present in this notch and here you can see this is the medial end and this medial end is not flat. This medial end is going to make a joint with the costal cartilage that will come here, the first costal cartilage and this sternum and this whole area is known as sternoclavicular joint. Now in this diagram you can see the capsule. Now this is the capsule of your sternoclavicular joint which is attached along the margin of your medial end of clavicle. Now in this diagram, in this image you can see this is your medial end. Now you can see that the medial end is not flat, it is quadrangular or quadrilateral. Now when you will go ahead, what you are able to understand the another features of the clavicle in this video. When you will move the clavicle, you will realize that the lateral end I have already told you is having this articular facet on the lateral end. It is flat end. This is your uh, medial end. And when you will rotate the clavicle all around, you are able to appreciate the, all the features which I just explained. Now, when you will see the inferior surface, you will have this impression and this is a uh, your tubercle and that is known as coronary tubercle. Here you will have the roughness. Again, this roughness is for the costoclavicular ligament. In this middle portion, you are having a small groove and that groove is for the subclavius muscle. So when you are having the clavicle, you have to see all around the clavicle for the different features and you have to look for this concavity. Now this concavity is very important for your exam purpose because that concavity is helpful in the side determination of your bone. Now what are the another important feature of the shaft? Now when you will see the shaft, shaft functionally divided into the two part, flattened lateral one third which I already explained you. Now this lateral flattened one third part suspend the scapula by a strong ligament is known as coracoclavicular ligament. Now why it is a strong ligament? Because this ligament take part in the weight transmission of upper limb to your clavicle. So this is a very commonly asked question, how the weight of upper limb is transmitting to the clavicle and from clavicle to the axial skeleton? Then the answer is coracoclavicular ligament. 
the medial one third. Now this medial one third is actually known as the long bone. So this part, the medial one third is the long bone because it is transmitting the weight or force of the clavicle from this coracoclavicular ligament to the axial skeleton. So this is the attachment. Suppose this is the attachment of your coracoclavicular ligament. So the weight is coming from the coracoclavicular ligament to the shaft and from this shaft it will go to the axial skeleton. Now the lateral one third is flattened from above downward. It is having the two surface and two borders. This is very uh, logical thing. So because it is a flat area, so you will have the anterior border and the posterior border. And I told you that laterally anterior border is having the concavity. Now this area is subcutaneous and here you will have the coracoclavicular ligament. Now the question comes is that for the attachment of coracoclavicular ligament, you are having the two very important bony features. One is known as conoid tubercle, another is known as trapezoid ridge. Now the conoid tubercle and trapezoid ridge are the features on the lateral one third of the clavicle on inferior surface. Now in this diagram you can see that this is your conoid tubercle which is a projection and then you will have a ridge. Now here you can appreciate the attachment of the ligament. Now this is the coracoid process of scapula and in between these two you can appreciate the two parts of the ligament, this part and this part. So these both parts are commonly known as coracoclavicular ligament and this ligament is helpful in the transmission of weight of the upper limb to the clavicle. Clear? Now what are the muscles attached on the lateral one third of the shaft? So when you will see the lateral one third of the shaft, you are having the anterior border of the lateral one third and there is a posterior border of the lateral one third. So which muscle attached on the anterior one third? Now here you can see this muscle is here and this is nothing but it is a deltoid muscle. So the lateral one third anterior border give attachment to the deltoid while the posterior border is receiving the insertion of a muscle which is present here is known as trapezius. What is that? Trapezius. So you will have the anterior border for the origin or origin of the deltoid and you have the posterior border for the insertion of trapezius. Then in this diagram you can appreciate that this is your lateral one third. In the lateral one third anteriorly you are having the origin of the deltoid and posteriorly this part is receiving the insertion of trapezius muscle. Now this is the dissected diagram here in this dissection you can see that this is your trapezius and this trapezius will go and insert on this posterior border of your clavicle which comes here. So this posterior border of clavicle receiving the insertion of these fibers of trapezius. Now here you will find that there is a gap present on the medial along the medial border of your deltoid and this area is known as deltopectoral groove because here you have a muscle is known as pectoralis major that I will explain in the coming diagram. So when you are having the lateral one third, on the lateral one third you have to keep two muscles in your mind, deltoid and trapezius but deltoid is arising from here so it is the origin and trapezius is inserting here. So this is the main difference between these two muscle attachment. Now, medial two third of the shaft, when you will see the medial two third, it is having the four surfaces and there is a no limiting borders between the surfaces, clear? So as I already told you that lateral one third is flat where you have the exact anterior and posterior border but when you will see the medial two third it is not flat it is having the quadrangular shape and because of this reason there is no border there are four surfaces. Now anterior surface is convex. Now here you can see this is hole is the anterior border. Now in this anterior border, this part I already explained you that is concave. Now this remaining portion is convex and this remaining convex portion give rise to a very big muscle and the fibers those are coming from here are 
the fibers of pectoralis major muscle. So you can see that these are the fibers which are known as clavicular fibers of pectoralis major. These are the external fibers of pectoralis major muscle. So the anterior border is having two muscles laterally deltoid and medial two third large origin of pectoralis major muscle. Now here in this dissection also you can see this is the anterior border. Now if you will see the anterior border these are the fibers of the deltoid here and these are the fibers of pectoralis major in this area. Clear? Now when you will see the posterior surface of the medial two third shaft it is concave backward that you can see it is concave on the posterior side and this surface is having only the origin of sternohyoid that is on the medial most part. Now this muscle is connecting the hyoid bone to the sternum uh, but the major relations are here. Now this, this is the question for your exam because initially I told you that the posterior part of the clavicle particularly the medial two third give protection to the neurovascular structures. So when you will see this area, now in this area there are n number of the blood vessels, nerves and arteries. Those are either going into the upper limb through this area or they are coming into the head and neck from this area. So this portion which is here is behind the clavicle. It is not anterior to the clavicle, it is behind the clavicle and which part of the clavicle? Medial two-third. So behind this medial two-third of the clavicle there are structures. What these are? Trunk of brachial plexus. So when you will see the brachial plexus, brachial plexus is having root, trunk, some, uh, then you will have uh, divisions and cords. So the trunks are present here which is going to enter into the axilla. In the same way you have the subclavian artery which arises and once it will arises it will take a turn on the lateral sides and then it make a loop on the superior surface of the first rib. Now after that here you can see that this subclavian artery is now going to enter inside the axilla and then it will known as axillary artery. So this portion is also again behind this part of the clavicle. So here is this artery. Then you will have the internal jugular and subclavian vein. You know that there is a initial part of the brachiocephalic vein and the brachiocephalic formed by the fusion of internal jugular which is coming from above and subclavian which is coming from the upper limb. So both these veins, the subclavian vein and internal jugular vein joins behind the clavicle and then it will continue as a brachiocephalic vein. And the important thing is apex of the lung. So you know that apex is present here. Now lungs are here which are covered by the cervical pleura and that apex is also lies behind this part of the clavicle. So this is a very commonly asked question in your exam. What are the structures lies behind the medial part of your clavicle? Now in this diagram, if you will see, you can appreciate this is your clavicle posterior border. And right now there are no neurovascular bundle. But when you do the placement of neurovascular bundle, you will realize that there is a brachiocephalic vein. Now this vein is formed by the internal jugular and subclavian vein. Then you will have the subclavian artery. Then you will have the part of your brachial plexus. Clear? So this is the important thing to understand that the medial part of the clavicle posterior border is not having any muscle attachment but this portion is purely providing support to the neurovascular structure which you can appreciate here. Clear? Now in this diagram you can see that this subclavian artery once passes below the clavicle it later on enters into the upper limb and here in the upper limb you can see that it will become axillary artery first in the axilla and later on it will continue as a brachial artery and then the brachial will divide into the two terminal branch radial and your ulnar artery. So this is the important concept to understand that how this subclavian artery enters into the axilla. So you will realize it passes behind the clavicle and this is actually the area which we are talking about. Now 
What about the superior surface? Now, superior surface give rise to the origin of very important muscle is known as sternocleidomastoid. Now, here you can see this muscle is known as sternocleidomastoid. There are three things. It arises from sternum and clavicle and it is inserting at the mastoid process of skull. So, mastoid process of skull bone is here. This is the sternum. This is the clavicle. So, the superior surface of clavicle give rise to the origin of clavicular fibers of this muscle and then it will merge with the sternal fibers and ultimately they will insert here on the mastoid process. Now what about the inferior surface of medial two third? Now inferior surface is having a important impression for costoclavicular ligament. So we have seen in the <coughs> earlier slides that there is a impression present on the medial side on inferior surface and that impression is for costoclavicular ligament. It also have a groove which we talked about that is known as subclavian groove. Now this subclavian groove receives the insertion of subclavius muscle. Now here if you will see this is the subclavius muscle. Now this subclavius muscle arises from the first costal cartilage. So here is the first costal cartilage. So this will arise from the first costal cartilage and it will insert on the inferior surface of your clavicle and it will create a groove. That's why I am saying this again and again that inferior surface is rough because of the presence of the grooves and tubercles. Nutrient foramen is also very important feature and this nutrient foramen generally you will find on the inferior surface near the groove and that uh, nutrient artery which is supplying the clavicle is a branch of supra scapular artery. Now the next is about the ossification. You have some questions. It has two primary and one secondary center of the ossification. This is the question. The two primary center appears at what age of intrauterine life? Answer is fifth to sixth week of intrauterine life and they both will fuse around 45th day of the intrauterine life. The secondary center is only one. And this secondary center is responsible for the medial end. Now this is the very, very important question for your exam that the clavicle is having only one secondary center. Now this one secondary center is present at which end of the clavicle? Answer is medial end or sternal end. And the another important thing is that this secondary center which appears after birth appear what age? Answer is at puberty that is around 14 to 50 years, 15 years and it fuses with the shaft at around 20 to 23rd year of life. That means it completes the ossification by the end of 23rd year of life. Clear? So there are two important questions from the slide. First is at what age the primary center appears? Second is at what age the secondary center appears and it is for which part of the clavicle? Answer is sternal end or medial end. Then you have the question about the fracture of the clavicle. The commonest fracture site of the clavicle is junction of medial two third and lateral one third. The junction of medial two third and lateral one third. Why? The reason is I told you that the ligament which is transmitting the weight of upper limb to the clavicle, which is known as coreco clavicular ligament is attached to that junction of medial two third and one third. So that is the reason that this is the site of the weight transmission through the coracoclavicular ligament because we realize that the coracoclavicular ligament does not have the attachment on the tip. It is attached somewhere on the inner side and that is at the junction of the curvature of lateral and medial part of the clavicle. So that point is the first reason. Second thing is the two curvatures are meeting here. So the cause of fracture is fall on the outstretched hand. If you will fall like with the outstretched hand and if there is a force occurs on the clavicle, it will get fractured. Now the fracture lead to the downward displacement of the lateral fragment due to the weight of the limb and this is known as drooping of the shoulder. So this is the most common site of the fracture that is the junction of this one third and two third. And here you can see that this is the line of weight transmission. The weight is not transmitting like this. The weight is transmitting like this. Clear? So because of this reason, this point is become vernal level for the
fracture. And once the fracture will occur, this fragment will go down. Why? Because of the weight of upper limb. The medial segment is lifted because of the pulling by sternocleidomastoid muscle. And what is the treatment? The treatment is figure of eight bandage. That means we are supporting, we have to bring this part downward and we have to take this part upward because the fracture causes downward shifting of the lateral part. So we have to lift this and this part is elevated due to the sternocleidomastoid. So we have to down it so that the alignment can take place. So for that we have, <coughs> we put a bandage and that bandage is something like this. Now this bandage is placed here across the neck and this is known as figure of eight bandage. Now this is again the important thing is known as green stick fracture. Green stick fracture means if you will take a green branch of a tree and if you try to break it, you will realize that you cannot break completely because it is green. If you have a dry stick, you completely break it. So when we have the incomplete fractures of the bone, we use the word green stick. Here you can see the fracture is there, but still you cannot have the complete fracture. The fragments are not completely divided into the two parts. So this type of the partial fractures are known as green stick fractures. And it is very important to un understand that it is a incomplete, clear? The delayed or non-unions of the clavicle are very rare. Generally clavicle heals well. Now this is the question, you may have this type of the question identified in these different areas. So this projection, I told you that this projection and a uh, area adjacent to this projection, these both are for the ligament and that ligament is known as coracoclavicular ligament which is having conoid tubercle and trapezoid ridge. So this is trapezoid ridge, this is conoid tubercle. Adjacent to that on the inferior surface, you are having the groove for your subclavius muscle and medially on the inferior surface, you are having the impression for the ligament that is known as costoclavicular ligament. So this is costoclavicular ligament. Then this area is for the acro uh, coracoclavicular ligament, coracoclavicular ligament, which are having two part trapezoid and conoid. And this is for subclavius muscle. Now here again you have this clavicle in your exam and here you can see again the impression is present on the medial side because the lateral side is flat you can see this is the concavity anteriorly. So this inferior surface arrow is for what answer is again for the ligament that is known as costoclavicular ligament. Now this projection, this projection is known as conoid tubercle. So at the end of this class of the clavicle, now we are able to understand how to identify the side of the clavicle. What are the differences between the two ends of the clavicle? What are the muscles attached to the clavicle? What are the ligaments, ligaments attached to the clavicle? And what are the peculiarities of this bone? So this is all for today's class. Thank you.